Instead of my daughter Jasmine, this is her baby. She's at work, my oldest daughter. Okay. Alan Harrison Jr. was born June 21st, 1935, to Eva Julia Smith and Alan Harrison Sr. in Eatonton, Georgia. He's the 10th child of 13. Bessie Lee, Rufus, twins Julia and Joseph, Eloise, Eva May, Maddie Lou, Christine, Alan Jr., Mary Lizzie, Robert Earl, and two others who didn't survive birth. Alan was a mama's boy. She gave him the nickname Dooney. Alan and Christine are only two siblings remaining. As a child, Alan attended school and worked daily. On Saturdays, he went to the theater in town to watch Superman and Cowboy movies. The family went to church every Sunday. Alan enjoyed quartet music and discovered his gift for singing at the age of seven. After the passing of both parents, Alan and youngest brother Robert moved to Lincoln Heights, Ohio. Alan was 16. The boys lived with older sis older sister, Be sister Bessie and her husband Sam Abrams. Alan got a job and joined a teen gospel quartet called the Lincoln Heights Gospel Singers. In 1953, at age 17, he accepted Christ, joined Ebenezer, and was baptized by then pastor, Reverend Young Scott. Alan started singing with the religious gospelers of Lincoln Heights, Ohio. The gospelers sang together for 53 years and have been all over the country. After the passing of Reverend Young Scott, Alan was under the leadership of Pastor Jack Zellers and after his passing, Reverend Jim Vickers, Jr. To this day, Alan and his wife are still faithful members of Ebenezer. Alan met Bobby Jean Johnson in 1955. They dated in March of 1956 and wedded July 28, 1956. Four months later, they gave two children, jo Joseph Keith and Jacqueline Karen, Keith is married to Carmen, and have been happily married for 51 years. They also have four grandsons, Joseph Allen, Robert Darrell Anthony, Ronce Devine, Jordan Allen, and one great-grandson, Deontay Lamont. Allen loves to cook and to see his family and friends enjoy his cooking. Amen. He was chef while working for Shiletto's. Shiletto. <laughs> he stayed with this company for years and worked in shipping and receiving when the company became Lazarus. Alan was hired on the job and forced into early retirement. Alan is also known for his sense of style. He admired his older brothers, Rufus and Joseph, who were always clean. It's always been important to Alan that his attire brings honor to God. Alan, who is now 72 years old, says his last birthday made him realize that he has gotten old, but it's a blessing to be able to see how the generations have evolved. Being a Christian has given him a better sense of love, understanding, giving, and sharing. It's also helped him to raise a family on biblical principles. All in all, I feel good, says Alan, which is my Uncle Doom. I didn't think I'd make it this far, but God watched over me. And if you want to be kept, he'll keep you too. Let's give the young people another hand. Especially these young women. They could be somewhere else. Doing something else, is that right? But by knowing somebody knowing the Lord, and somebody prayed for them, they is in the house of the Lord. At this time, we're gonna change the program just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna call for the vision to come, and after the vision saying, we're gonna take up the offering, all right? Vision Ministry.
welcome you all to my uncle Alan Harrison, my uncle Doon, his appreciation celebration. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? We welcome you to this evening, I know some of your second watches, to celebrate a man who have touched many of our, our, our hearts and our lives with song and music and just his presence. But I hear and I stand here, he has stood in the gap for me. So I appreciate him being here. I know some of you are here for good music, but I appreciate my Uncle Doom for what he has done for me in my time of need. I appreciate him. We just welcome you. We thank God for you. We thank God for our Uncle Doom. God bless you and welcome. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. I do a little better without this stand. Uh, when you talk about recognition and appreciation, um, Alan Harrison Jr., who you know him by like my cousin just said, I know him purely and simply as Uncle Doom. And before we get started with the introduction, I want him to know that to me, he has been my humble hero. A man that doesn't have to say a lot, but what he says is impactful to the soul and to the mind. 
And also, before we get started with the introduction of our honoree and our master of ceremonies, uh, she's busy scurrying now, but she just reminds me of my grandmother, uh, Julia Curley. I want to say thank you to Aunt Mabel for taking on this challenge and really giving praise and worship uh, while they're still here. Because as I stand and take a look around the memorial quilt, there's a lot of family members that are not here with us today. And oftentimes we are quick to say thank you and how much we appreciate you and how much we love you with a casket standing here in front of us. So for me here today to have the distinctive privilege to introduce my uncle while he's still living, good breath, good life, I want to thank the Lord, but more than that, I want to thank Aunt Mabel. I want to thank my sister Kim for standing up today and filling my soul with great joy. And I just want you to know how much family is important and how much this family has meant to me. And it's not often that we say that. So without any further ado, because see, I am long-winded, I want to take this time to introduce our honoree, Mr. Allen Harrison Jr., affectionately known as Uncle Doom. I think we can do a little bit better than that. Another round of applause for Alan Harrison Jr., Uncle Doom. And just while I have him in front of me once again, I just want to tell and share with Uncle Doom that you are a legacy with this family, and you are truly, Uncle Doom, uh, a humble hero. Just real quick, and I know it's three and a half minutes, but I'm introducing the honoree, so I have a little extra time on. Um, I can remember sitting in my grandmother's living room and her talking to Uncle Doon on the phone. And I had just went through my first semester of college and I wasn't familiar with college, wasn't very bright in high school, and I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up. And me and Grandma had just left the garden and she told Uncle Doon about it. And of course, he said, we'll put him on the phone. And he said, Sean, I'm going to tell you, that would be the biggest mistake you could ever make. And that minor sentence that he gave me has impacted my life to where I am today. So once again, Uncle Doon, I just want to say thank you and I love you. I just want to say praise the Lord and to my cousin, Alan, I just want to say God bless you and all down through the years you have always been one of the greatest singers I know. And I know Charles used to always say how great he thought you were. Just keep praising God, keep doing the things that you're doing, and God bless you. Put your hands together. If when you give the best of your service, trying to tell the world about Jesus and tell them that the Savior has come, don't be discouraged if men don't believe you. Don't be dismayed if your so-called friends deceive you. God will. I know that he will. He'll understand and say well done. Listen now. Yeah, when you try and you fail in your trying, your hands are battered and scarred from the work you have begun. Take up your cross. Take up your cross. Run swiftly to meet Jesus. God wins. I 
know that he will he'll understand and say well done Now you want to see Jesus, see him face to face, yes you do now. I don't want to hear him say, well, well done, well done, you ain't faithful, sir. You ain't faithful, sir. Well, well done, well done, you ain't faithful, sir. You ain't faithful, sir. I want to see Jesus, see him face to face. See the one who saved me by his amazing grace, yes, I do now. I got one to Hey, well, well done. Well done. faithful, sir. That's all right. Come on in, brother, and take your rest. I want you to sit down and take your rest. Sit down. I want to see Jesus, see him face to face. He's the one who saved me by his amazing grace. Yes, I do now. I got one. presentation ready? I believe she said the presentations will be coming in right now. Is that right? Sister Mabel? Sister Mabel? They come with the presentation. Now each each other group that come, I know it won't you won't get angry. Just saying a says that we can all sing and go. That ain't gonna hurt the golden hours. Good evening, everyone. It is so nice to have all y'all here to help celebrate our uncle uh, and your day. And I just love him. We all love him. And his wife was standing beside his side to let him be able to do what he do for his family. And we just love both of them. And we just appreciate him. And I'm not going to say too much because I might start crying. He tell me, don't cry because he'll start crying. So I'm not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe, my Uncle Alan. <laughs> and to my very lovely Aunt Bobby. Get back into the program and turn it back over to the Reverend. All right, are we doing all right? The one and only.
Curtis Joyce, Bishop. Wait, I just seen him. Say amen. Say amen again. I have a little, I have a little thing I need to say. When I come through, I like to say to the Lord, thank you. Let me hear you say the Lord, thank you. Say it again. Say it again. I give honor to God tonight, the afternoon, rather than to the pastor of this great church and his companion to each and every one of the sound of my voice and to my my good good friend. Amen. Deacon Harrison and to his wife. Behind every great man there's a woman. Amen. I don't hear y'all mentioning about her too much, but she she's with him. But I thank the Lord for being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I have to get that in. He's been real good to us. I used to sing with, with, with Deacon Ashton. We sung a long time together. And I thank the Lord for him. He's been a good friend of mine. I don't want to do a lot of talking because I get, I get excited when I talk about the Lord and good people. And I thank the Lord for him and his wife. Continue, continue to keep on, Doc. You're looking good. You're looking good. The Lord been good to you. Hold on to him. I really love the Lord. You know that song? I love the Lord. I really believe he loves the Lord. Because he's been on the battlefield a long time. Thank you. All right. Bishop Josh. Church down at 131 Wayne Avenue in Lachlan. He's the bishop. God is good. And all the time he is good. No need us going around with our shoulders up on our... God is good. I didn't want to put it like that. Come on. And right now, the gospel airs from right here in Cincinnati. The golden air. See, when you get a little old and G look like C. The golden air. Now give Alan and his beautiful wife a hand. Give him a big hand. <laughs> you know, I, I admired everybody that sang here. And the statement he made, he says, uh, you don't walk fast as you used to do. Well, I can remember when Alan was, I can't say a boy, but a young man. And we were all Jesse, <laughs> gospel airs. We were all getting around the corner singing and praising God. And you know it's a good thing to praise God, isn't that right? And you, you, for, for God is a good God, isn't that right? We're not going to do a whole lot of talking because the man told me to do one song. And let me tell y'all something. God is so good that he let me live on this earth 77 years. I say God is so good that he let me live on this world. See, some of us, it, it's kind of shame to tell folks that we done got old. But let me tell you something. I am glad I am glad that God let me live on this earth long enough. God Almighty, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Sent me all over in Japan and then in Korea. But let me tell you something. Since I found you, I found a friend. Found a good friend. You know, it's good to able, able, be able to have a friend, isn't that right? Huh? And I don't care where you go. One of these days, you're going to leave here. You're going to leave this world. And let me tell you something. Y'all, we ain't supposed to do but one song. But 
we're only just do one verse of this one, okay? I want everybody in the building to put their hands together. Come on, let's go. It one Friday evening. I was sitting down on the morning bench. And something began to move. And you know what I did? Kentucky. They sent me a note, and I had, to, I had to be obedient by the note because uh, Deacon Allen's daughter sent this note to me. All the way from Northern Kentucky, the Brotherhood Singers. All right? We have some groups not on program. The group from Golan Gate, I believe it's the mayor, of course, with the chairman of the board with them. Come on. Well, I'm singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha not to mow. Tell Martha oh, not to mow. Singing Mary. Oh, yeah. Mary, don't you weep. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell Martha not to mow. Because Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. Don't you know that they drown? Drown in your sea. Singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell Martha not to mow. One more time, singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell Martha not to mow. Well, 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 Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. Cause Pharaoh's eyes. Pharaoh's eyes. Don't you know that they're drowning? Drown 
down in the red Yes, sea. they did. Say, Aunt Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. One more time, say, Aunt Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. Well, 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 Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. Cause Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. Don't you know that they drowned? Drown in the red sea. Yes, they did. Say, Aunt Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. I'm singing if. If. I could Don't you know that I would I Surely would I'm gonna stand Stand, stand down on the rock Where Moses stood Moses stood Cause Pharaoh's army Pharaoh's army Don't you know that they drowned Child in the Red Sea Say Mary Oh Mary don't you eat Tell your mother not to mow Tell your mother not to mow One more time say Mary Oh Mary don't you eat Tell your mother not to mow Tell your mother not to mow. Well, 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 Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. Cause Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. Don't you know that they're drowning? Drown in the Red Sea. Yes, they did. Say, Aunt Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. Tell your mother not to mow. Tell your mother not to mow. Well, I'm so singing if, if I could. I believe that I surely would. I'm gonna stand, stand, stand on the rock where Moses stood. Moses stood. Cause Pharaoh's army. Pharaoh's army. Don't you know that they drowned? Drowned in the Red Sea. Singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you eat. I'm 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 singing Mary. Oh, Mary. Somebody needs to tell it to Mary. Oh, Mary, hey, don't you wait. You don't have to cry. Oh, no Mary, don't you wait. You better tell her you serve a mighty God. Oh, Mary, that you don't have to worry about your problems. Oh, Mary, don't you wait. Don't you worry. Oh, Mary, don't you wait. 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 Oh, Mary, don't you Pharaoh's army drowned in the sea. Drown in the red sea. Singing, Mary.
See, the, the young people don't understand song like that. Is that right? They don't understand song like that. All right. Is Deborah Patton in the house? Deborah? Okay. Waiting on you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Giving our honor and glory to God this evening, to the pastor of this house. I'm very glad to be here to celebrate my Uncle June's day. And for those of you who don't know how Uncle June is my uncle, I have my adoption certificate. <laughs> And it says, adoption certificate, Debbie C. Patton is now an official member of the Abrams, Curley, Russo, Harrison, and Harris family by Judge John Doe, March the 15th, 1988. And that's how come I have the privilege to call Uncle Dune, Uncle Dune. And I just want to thank um, Uncle Dune has just been such a good friend down through the years. And you know, you know how you got those friends that quit speaking to you and turn their back on you and call you everything but a child of God and tell you this and tell you that. But I tell you, not my Uncle Doom. <laughs> he has been a friend to the end. He's been there when people's turned their backs on me. He's been there for me when people lied on me. He's just been there for me. And I appreciate it. And I know he's got a bunch of nieces and nephews and cousins and all of that, but he has time for me. And that means the world to me. And see this little baby here? I've had about three or four major surgeries the last five or six years. And every time they keep this little baby for me, my little grandbaby. So, and I love him to death. I appreciate you all. And the whole Abram, Curly. Russo, Harris, and Harris family, I love all of you. Thank you. Uh, Mackie. Reverend Earl Mackie. Praise God, saints. Uh, Reverend Earl Mackey couldn't be here today, so he called me and asked me to stand in for him. So he wanted me to read a scripture. Um, Psalms 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Amen. Amen. He wanted me to say to Doom, uh, remember the good times on Adams Street at Maddie Lou and Robert's house. <laughs> so y'all know Earl Mackey. I said, now don't get crazy. <laughs> so he said, that's enough. He'll know what I'm talking about. Amen. And he said that uh, he loves you and you know that he would have been here if he could, but something came up, he had an emergency, and he said he will see you as soon as he can. Amen. 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 God bless. Amen. Next is Brother Massey. Brother Massey, he one of the religious gospel they are singers. He been very sick, but you see the Lord had brought him out.
Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. My friend, Brother Allen. Hallelujah. Down through the years. We've been traveling down through the years. So many places we went. Hallelujah. So many places. We've been all over the country. Hallelujah. Traveling together. Hallelujah. I put two offers now. All the rest of them going on home. Hallelujah. Lord, she fit to leave us here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is Allie Day, Eddie. Allie and Sister Harris. Hallelujah. Let's give them a hand. God is good. Yes, Lord. You know, I'm not going to talk about myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I know God's been good to me. But Brother Allen, he's he been down too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call one another every day. Every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talk. Talk about the old time. Hallelujah. New time. <laughs> if I want to know something, I call Brother Allen. <laughs> he said, Sister Harris, this is she's telling me, yeah, the Allen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is good. Yes, God is good. Uh, uh, I just want to say you, we call him Godfather. Down through the year, Godfather. Yeah. I remember one time we was coming out of Chicago. I believe it was, yeah. We had been there all day long and, and uh, we had to eat anything. And I think Sister Harris had fi fixed out uh, some. Uh, Simon Cocat, you know, put him in a paper bag, brown paper bag. You remember that? <laughs> and uh, coming out here, something rattling over there in the corner. I kept looking around. Allen was eating out of a paper bag, eating that Simon Cocat. I said, Allen, will you give me a piece of that Cocat, please? <laughs> we was hungry. Yeah, he gave me a piece of that cold cat. And I never find a nothing taste just like that cold cat. That was good, sister. Hair. Good hair. I'm not, I'm not going to talk much. I, I think I called my wife up. We're going, can we do your little song? Can we do your little song? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll call my wife up. We're going to do just, just, a, just a little portion of the song. Hallelujah. I was going to do, I am a living testimony, but I'm not, <laughs> but I am a living testimony. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say anything about Amen. myself, because God is good. Yeah, it's just good to see all y'all faces out again. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to do just a little power. Yeah, a little power. Amen. Hallelujah. There is power. So much power, power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There is power, so much power, there's power in the name. There is power, so much power. Yes, power in the name, in the name of Jesus. Power. So much power. There is power in the name. Well, a man came to Jesus and said, Lord, I want to be healed. Oh, yeah. My body out here was sore. And said, Lord, I, I want to leave. Oh, huh. Jesus reached down and touched him. And all the soul went away. Just like he healed that man that day. Changed your sickness away. Because he bought me with power. So much power. Yes, power in the name. In the name of Jesus. Power. So much power that is power in the name. Now 
Father, if you really know that the Lord has brought good, uh -huh. you stand and shout to the world, I am a witness. Come, Come on, clap your hands, and, and I have, have no doubt. Through all of my troubles and trials, it was she brought me out. And they brought me with power, a soul power, a soul as power in the name, in the name, she brought power, so much power that is power. I said, say, there is power in me. Talk about power. There's so much power. In the name. There's healing power. There's healing power. In the name. Talk about power. In the name. There's so much power. In the name. There's healing power. In the name. There's healing power. In the name. No more power. In the name. Talk about power. In the name. The Holy Ghost power in the name. The Holy Ghost power in the name. Yeah. In the name. There is the power. Oh, so much power. I call them Brother and Sister Pew. Y'all remember Brother and Sister Pew out of Florida? I named them Brother and Sister Pew. Brother, Brother Allen, good friend, come forward. Jake. God bless. You know, I have a serious problem with trying to describe greatness in five minutes, but I'm gonna try to do that anyway. Because we have a situation here where there is greatness in the man. 41 years, I know Uncle Ben said that there was only two of them left and I was kind of looking around and saying, where am I? <laughs> I played guitar for him 15 years. But to make it as short as possible, my wife looked at me last week. I said, honey, I don't have nothing to say. She looked at me if she's seen the ghost, say, me, tell me, you don't have nothing to say. Now I could have took that two ways. She said, honey, we'll talk about singing. It's more than singing. This is not about singing. It's about a man, a husband, a father, a grandfather, my friend, my mentor. And describe anything about singing in that scenario. Reverend Vickers, if I could you tonight about soteriology, I said to myself, I said, what kind of shepherd would leave 99 sheep in the wilderness to seek for one that is lost? What kind of shepherd would refer to a woman sweeping her house and garnishing it to find one silver coin that's lost? What kind of shepherd would give a parable of a wayward prophet's son that run away and spend all his money on riotous living? What kind of man would it be that sits silently waiting on his son to return? And when his son returned, rather than to say, boy, you smell like pig poop, he said, bring me my best robe and let me robe this child. The robe is symbolizing the robe of righteousness to cover the shame of his son. The Bible says this, love has a multitude of sin. Love is where I found the undercurrent. What makes the man great is love. What makes this man so magnificent and so extraordinary is love. And I thought about 1 Corinthians chapter 1. If I speak with tongues of men and angels, and have not love, I'm nothing but sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Preachers, I'm going to veer off of this a minute. Pastors, preachers, laities, members, if you can sing like a canary, 
If you could preach if though you was T.D. Jakes with all of the tonality and flexion and all of the style of preaching that he does and don't have love, you ain't about nothing. You ain't about nothing. Worthless. Profiting nothing. But I skip down on the 13th chapter, 1 Corinthians to the 4th chapter, and it says this. That whole chapter describes what love is and what love is not. The fourth chapter says, love is patient and is kind. I said, I found my, I found my linchpin for the man. The Bobby's husband, Keith father, Jackie father, their children, grandfather, the whole thing came together when it said love is kind and suffers long. This man suffered with me as a teenager, just turning 20. I know he got to have patience. <laughs> Two guitar players thought they was all of that in a bag of chips. Met my wife while I was in all of that. But this is what I'm saying. You got to find the undercurrents. And it goes on to say that love envy not and vaunted itself not. Vaunted mean to boast. He's not a boastful man. He's not an envious man. And he goes on to say that love rejoices not in evil but in good. Love beareth all things, hopes all things, and believes all things. Now you say, wait a minute. Am I supposed to believe everything that comes out? No, 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 no. Love believes in you. If I come to you and say, Brother Harrison, I believe I can get this job. He said, I believe it too. I hope I get it tomorrow. He said, I hope too. But here's how he bear me. If there's anything that I can do, call me. That's bearing all things, hope all things, and loving all things. That's the man. Bobby's husband. Keith's father. Jackie's daddy. And their children's grandfather. And I'm going to end this in two more minutes. Just give me time. <laughs> It says this, love, when prophecy passed away, tongues ceased, knowledge ceased, but love, what does it say? Never fails. Never fails. Never. You know never is forever. That's a long time. That time don't wear out, does it? My shoes will get old, but time don't wear out. And at the end it says, now abide. Faith, hope, and the love. And the greater of these three is Alan Harrison, Jr. Thank you. Thank you, Mabel. This has been one of the best and happy days of my life. I can't remember anything. Have touched me like this. I want my wife to come up here with me. Come up here. This is my standby. I want my daughter and uh, my niece to come up too. Mabel. Mabel. I want my sister to come up. What my sister at? I know she back there someplace. I love all of my people, but Amen. these are really close to my son and my son-in-law, my daughter-in-law, I mean. Y'all stand. 
Y'all don't have to come up if you don't want to. But I love you. But as I look back over my life and see how good God has been to me, it wasn't a good thing, it's all good I've done. I've did some bad things. But God watched over me. And I'm just here to say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Two of the gospel layers here, I know we stopped singing. If y'all don't mind, just come up here just for a moment. Brother Hale Evans and Brother Ben Massey. I love them like brothers. Through a lot. We had three members that die out of the group. 